Hi guys, Alana here with Jamie. Thanks for joining us for another topic or COVID, what do we call, I never remember, COVID conversation at the Praying Christian Women podcast. That is way more of a mouthful than it should be. I always find myself wanting to call it COVID, the COVID Chronicles. <laughs> that makes it sound way too long though. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I told you how we're doing the thing on our whiteboard in the bedroom. Yes. So we'll put like day 20 and then we'll each write one thing we're thankful for. And my my 14 year old is like, when you number the days like that, it makes it feel like the apocalypse or something. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, you have these visions of um, like being in, like in prison counting or cast day away. 2,912. <laughs> right. It's like, okay. Yeah. But I think it's good to, to, I don't know, keep track. And I saw something neat on Facebook where people are copying and pasting this thing that's like, just so I remember, because I know this is going to pop mm. up on my news yeah. feed years from now, like mm -hmm. April 2nd, 2020, this is what's going on. And it has a place for you to fill in. What are your gas prices like? What's your, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if the recording got that. You're, you blipped out on my screen. Can you? So the last I heard was something about, because I know it's going to show up on my Facebook memories and then you kind oh, of froze. Yeah. So, and we, yeah. You froze up too. So in case you didn't okay. get that. So it comes on, it, it's like, um, because your posts come back up, you know, like right, on this day yeah. a year ago, five years ago. So it's just so that I remember April 2nd, 2020, this is what's going on. And it'll say, th these are the gas prices today in my oh, town. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on with the school systems. And then it has a lot of general things like, you know, the world is different. People are wearing masks to go out or, you know, people are, uh, businesses are closed and just all of the mm -hmm. things that are going on right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Right. Right. Interesting. Yeah. But so when is the last time that you actually drove anywhere? This morning. I oh, actually, what'd you do? My na so I have a neighbor that can't drive and she's older and has some health issues and it's probably, she needed something to be delivered to uh -huh. her, our quick care. A sample had to be taken to the mm -hmm. quick care because of some issues she's having. So I basically put a mask on, put gloves on, met her at the door, grabbed it, drive mm -hmm. there. You drived? I drived it there. <laughs> and, um, and the, I mean, it's like a block from our house. It's on the corner of our street, basically. And oh, okay. um, it's just right up at, yeah, intersection mm -hmm. up at the top of our road. It's an urgent care. And so they just had someone, um, I didn't know what it was going to be like. And I was kind of feeling nervous about it at first. Uh -huh. because I thought, Am I going to have to go in there? Am I going right, to be right. touching things? But I basically just had to take it. They had a sign on the door that said, please don't come in, call our office. Well, I oh. had left my cell phone at home because oh, I was just great. running real quick. Yeah, so right. I was like holding this thing and I'm like, uh, ah. hello. And they waved and they're like, okay, hang on. So that someone Funny. came outside, grabbed it, and that was it. They were That's wearing gloves. Easy. Yeah, a very yeah. easy handoff. But, um, and then I, and so every once in a while, I'll get some groceries for her. And I've been trying mm -hmm. to do the curbside, you know, like the curbside yeah. grocery thing. Um, but like, like one time she needed a birthday card for uh, mm -hmm. her grandson. So I had to go in and actually pick right, it up. Right. Um, but yeah, so really the, other than going to the grocery store, which I'm trying to do only once a week, that's the only thing that I've done other than okay. weekly grocery trip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? Um, I really haven't done anything. Scott's still going into the office and he'll pick up groceries if we need it on the way home. He did have, um, I needed to drive to his office at some point last week because he, his car battery died. So I had to drive so that he could, you know, hook it up and do that. But it was like a mile and a half from home and took all of 10 minutes, you know, there and back. <laughs> Yeah. So that's all I, oh, it, and our mailbox is all the way around the corner. It's like a quarter mile to the mailbox and it's some days really, really icy. So I think like two times since the lockdown started, I've driven to the mailbox because I didn't want to go on the ice. Well, my husband and I were trying to calculate how much we are saving in gas money mm -hmm. um, during this time <clears throat> For because sure. between gas money and 
just nickel and dime stuff. Like I would say that we had to, uh, had is relative. I could prepare ahead, but, but with hockey and music schedules, mm-hmm. there's at least one day a week that we kind of like air quotes have to grab fast food on the right. way in mm-hmm. between places. Yeah. yeah. And so there's fast food, there's you know, um, gas and just Mm -hmm. things like when you're out. Incidentals when you're out and about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the number of grocery trips that you do, Mm -hmm. if you go three times a week for a couple of ingredients, I mean, how many times do you come out with exactly the number of ingredients on your list? You'll sometimes Mm -hmm. say, Oh, we Mm -hmm. need this or we need this. So, you know, just things like that, I think are definitely being saved. And that's a good thing. For sure. You know, I was even thinking again, I'm just going to have to stop apologizing for being morbid because I think, you know, like this is a morbid kind of time. So Scott and I were talking last night, wouldn't it be interesting to see the number of non COVID related deaths? Because I wouldn't be surprised, like there's not going to be the same number of automobile accidents. There's not going to be the same number of like even some medical procedures. Like if it's not I don't know how it is in other states, but right now, like if it's not a life-saving thing that you need, it's probably been postponed, Right. you know? So it actually made me wonder, like are, are fewer people dying all told, um, you know, or at the very least, I, I would guess that non-COVID related deaths would be quite a bit lower. Right. Because of accidents. Well, and what I was wondering about too, I read a couple of conflicting articles. I was wondering about crime. And right. On one hand, I feel like when people are in a desperate place, there's more mm-hmm. crime, like mm-hmm. nonviolent. Well, maybe violent, but you know. Right. Okay. So I think there's there are two levels. So on one level, maybe domestic violence has probably increased mm-hmm. um, because of people under stress at home. Yeah. Um, but I just wondered, like, if people are in desperate situations, if there's more you know, like, uh, like we talked about, um, an article that I read when we did our take 10 Tuesday in the praying Christian women community the other day, I, we prayed through the headlines. And one of the things I had read was that in Southern Italy, they're afraid of the mafia Mm -hmm. taking, getting a foothold because of people being in very desperate situations. The South is traditionally less, um, they're poorer area, I guess. And they're also seeing like some organized social media, organized looting happening. Right. And so I just wonder if that's happening across the country or if that's something that I have not seen any reports. The only, the main reports I'm seeing is that crime is actually down in yeah. general. If I had to guess, I would guess <clears throat> that we're not going to see like the looting and things like that unless things get a lot worse. Mm-hmm. You know, like that seems to be, I know, um, I was listening to just this, I've been listening to some interesting history podcasts and one of them was talking about the French Revolution and, you know, basically how a society can put up with all kinds of oppression, but when they start to starve Mm -hmm. is when things get bad. And based on some of the research I did in North Korea for some of my novels, Mm -hmm. um, they said the same thing, but on a slightly, um, and then they added another layer to it where the worst time for a tyrannical government um, to have to fear like being overthrown or the people rebelling. Mm -hmm. It's when there's been a period of famine and then there's a slight reprieve and then people rebel, (laughs) you know, because now they've got like the physical energy. So all that to say, like I've thought about that too, but I would, I would guess that things would have to get really a lot worse for us to have to worry about that side of things. Yeah. But who knows, you know, things can change in a, in a second. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, it seems like probably some crime, they're saying at least several reports that I read in different places, big cities, crime was down. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me for right yeah. now because, yeah. you know, you're not going to be robbing people's homes if you know their home. Um, you right, know. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. But, but yeah, I mean. Interesting. Yeah, it is <clears throat> just just the different effects that are out yeah, there. Yeah, how it kind of impacts everything. Yeah. Well, I have some really cool a cool story that I heard today. Okay. Um, so one of our listeners is actually using the devotional that we have, mm-hmm. the COVID nineteen. You know, uh, let's see, the Praying Christian Women's Guide to Praying Through the COVID nineteen Crisis. Um, 
someone is using that, um, like forwarded it to a bunch of friends and they're going through mm -hmm. it together by email. Like they're just kind of oh, like, cool. hey, let's go through this together. And then they'll kind of comment each day. That's on neat. That was really encouraging. That was really cool to hear. That is, that's really fun. Yeah. How about you? Are you doing much like socially? Are there any like in your social sphere ways to kind of stay in touch creatively? I have a friend that is, she has been posting uh, these Bible trivia things on a mm -hmm. thread that I'm on. Um, mm -hmm. It was like our life group thread. Um, so she posts a picture from a book that she has with Bible trivia. It's on a text thread. And so mm -hmm. throughout the day, we'll just, you know, whoever is like one day I jumped on, I haven't done it the That's last time, but yeah, just, and, and you just, whoever wants to, will jump on and say, oh, number six was this or. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've actually thought that it would be fun to like invite another family or two and do like a Bible trivia night. We don't have, like, we don't have any board games that would work, but I'm sure you could find stuff online because yeah. um, Scott's not very into it, but the kids and I, well. I like board games a lot and I coerce the kids into <laughs> having into good liking it while we play them. And I was trying to think of games that like could kind of be done with others, you know, um, and trivia was the one that seems like it would be the easiest to translate to something where like on a zoom call or, you know, Google hangouts. Right. You don't have to move things on a board mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. keep track of that stuff. Well, yeah. we did, we did a virtual play day with our cousin, with my, um, mm -hmm. my brother and sister-in-law's kids. So my youngest, um, and her and their daughter are similar in age. And so we just basically, I gave my daughter the phone and we did a FaceTime. Aww. We just carried it around. And of course, you know, there's, can I give her a tour of the house? And she's a tour of the house and she set up the, the, the phone, it, it, just like with a little propped up thing mm -hmm. so that she said, now, what do you want me to draw for you? Cause she had her little Aww. paints. She's like, what do you want me to paint for you? So she painted this sweet little picture of the two of them holding hands, you know? Oh, how cute. Oh yeah. And then she said, first it was, she wanted her to do a rainbow. So she like did a rainbow and uh -huh. then my, and my middle son came in and was kind of doing some of the same stuff. But That's fun. Kind of fun. I mean, it was just for like an hour. They just kind of yeah. walked around with the phone and talked and mm -hmm. showed her the lizards. And then she showed them her room and yeah. they were driving to Chick-fil-A to get carry out and, you know, just stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was fun. <clears throat> that is fun. Did you see the thing? So do you, are you familiar with Dolly Parton's Imagination Library? Yeah, yeah. And now she's reading Bedtime she's Stories. Reading is that what it is? Stories. I've just seen the headlines. I haven't actually um, seen, but you know, I posted I, it on Facebook, yeah. on my personal Facebook page. Yeah. There are a lot of things that I admire about her. Me Did too. we talk about the story with um, graduation rates? Did I tell you that story? Mm -mm. So maybe like 10 years ago or something, there was a, um, a school district in her local area that was kind of known for having really poor graduation rates. And so she went to like this fifth grade class. I'm getting details wrong, but here's the gist. She went to this fifth grade class or like, the, like did an assembly for all the fifth graders or something like that. And how it was, was they got paired with a buddy and if both they and their buddy graduated, then they each got like $500 a piece from Dolly Aww. like on graduation day. And it made a huge difference. And that it's just, so it's a cool. neat, uh, neat story of how like one thing can make a difference. And you know what I love? I love her. Um, she has an Easter song. I think it's just, he is alive. Do you know that one? Yes. Oh, it's man. really powerful. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, I do. I love her. I love. Dolly yeah. Parton. And you know what I didn't realize until recently? Did you know that she wrote, um, that, uh, Whitney Houston song from the bodyguard? Oh, you know, that was a doll original. I didn't realize that at first and yeah. I just heard it recently. I guess, yeah. Wait, so what song am I talking about? Um, I will always the, love you. Yeah. 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 I was a big yeah, Whitney lots fan. of cool, lots of cool things. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. She was in Dolly Parton was in a funny gospel like comedy movie. I think it was with Queen Latifah. Did you see it? Um, Dolly. Parton it was pretty Queen funny. Latifah. It's not. I it's would not have like, to. Yeah, it's not a Christian film per se, but it's about these like two women who both want to take over the church choir. 
Um, I would have to watch that because I love (laughs) Queen Latifah. Last Uh Holiday is like my kids all know that's mom's Christmas movie. It's I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of it. Oh, it's so funny. Last Holiday with Queen Latifah. I love Queen Latifah. Okay. Yeah, I loved her when she was just a rapper, and I love her now. (laughs) You know, our listeners are learning such bizarre truths about us. (laughs) I am a big rap fan. I'm serious. I loved, I love 80s and 90s rap. So that's oh okay. It's yeah. out there. No, it, it's a pretty funny one. Maybe we could find a way to like Netflix it together or something. Oh, like that would be so cool because I love both of those <laughs> Movie women. Night. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I think that's really cool what Dolly's doing. So I have a funny when you were telling me about what Dolly Parton did for the the graduation rates. I'm sure that this mm-hmm. is where this came from. But um, so my husband and I like the show The Office, and there's with a. Steve Carell. Mm -hmm. And there is an episode called Scott's Tots. So he's, he plays this character, Michael Scott, who's this kind of, you know, silly boss of an office. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. the premise of this episode is that when he, and he's got a good heart, but he's just kind of bumbling. Right. Right. So the premise of the episode is that when, you know, like, I, I don't know when the kids were in fifth grade. So I'm sure he was referencing this Dolly. Okay. When the kids were in fifth grade, he realized that the kids in this neighborhood school had low graduation rates. So mm-hmm. he went in there and he promised that he would pay college tuition for each kid that graduated. Uh-huh. And so then, you know, he got the memo in this episode that these kids were graduating that year. And he was like, uh, <laughs> and he just says to the camera, he's like, I really thought I was going to be a millionaire by this time. Like he oh, honestly yeah. thought that, you know, he promised this <laughs> believing that he was going to be a millionaire by the time they graduated. Oops. So the whole episode is about <clears throat> him. Like he goes there and they're welcoming him and they're doing backflips and doing this oh, like yeah. step show for him. And like, he's, he basically has to tell them at the end of all of this, they're like, you made such a difference. Like our entire class oh, graduated. Yeah. And then he has to tell them that he couldn't pay and he ends up paying, paying for books for one kid. And the moral of the story is that he doesn't get a lot right, but he has a big heart and these kids all graduated (laughs) because of him, but he he wrote a check for this one kid for, you know, to cover his books for the semester, his first semester. That's cute. Anyway. Well, speaking of The Office, it's one of Scott's kind of background noise shows. Yeah. And did you see just a couple days ago, one of the characters started his own like positive news network YouTube channels? No. It was very, that was where I got the story of the girl who was coming home after the last cancer treatment. So I'll try to remember to send you the link. And then he does an interview with the guy who plays the boss. It was, it was just a cute little... Oh. Um, you know, they're both hunkered down, doing a little, you know. I would love to see that. I would love to watch that. Yeah, send me the link to that. I'll do that. So for people who don't watch The Office, (laughs) what else is going on? (laughs) Things are, I I feel like things are kind of just settling down now. Okay, so did you hear, I'm sure you're even more familiar than I am. So apparently Alaska's students are now, they now have access to like a K-12 program out of Florida. Like, is your, are your kids doing that or are they just kind of still going through the local school or what's going on? Uh, the superintendent was going to be, Ooh, I missed it. So like, at I know. Noon, <laughs> that's okay. well, so I think it was noon today. The mayor was going to give an address and the school superintendent was going to give an update and I totally mm. missed it, but I'll look and find out. She might mention something about that. I okay. saw it on the news also <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. You know, that there's kind of controversy over, well, why are we using an out of state thing with out of state mm-hmm. teachers? And mm-hmm. so I don't know the details so far. I oh, have okay. not gotten a personal, we're still just doing the local thing. It's, uh, mm-hmm. we're logging on to a certain, uh, we're using Google Classroom, Google Classroom uh-huh. for most of them. And then there's like a, it's something called Canva, which is just kind of a general online teaching thing. So mm-hmm. as far as I know, our kids are not affected by that, but maybe they will be. And maybe okay. next, I, I don't know what, what's. Yeah, who knows? For, for next I year. read this funny story. So you probably saw it going around Facebook. There were lots of April Fool's jokes about, you know, how kids are going to have to repeat this grade. Yes. Right. Does? Okay. So um, apparently there was a local newspaper somewhere in the lower 48 that ran a story like that. Yeah. There and was they a had, Missouri one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, they had to take it down right away because like people actually thought it was serious and they were getting calls from the school district because they didn't tell the school district they were running oh, this. You know? no. I mean, it was like, it was as close to an innocent a mistake as you can make, but still it's like, oh, no. <laughs> can you imagine those, you know, like the poor superintendents and principals are getting all these frantic calls. What do you mean my kid has to repeat this screen? <laughs> right. Well, and so I, I cannot pull off jokes normally. I've had I, there oh, was really? one one joke of my life that I pulled off flawlessly and I I'm so proud of. Never uh-huh. have I been able to pull off jokes. So I tried it with my kids. I said, "Oh gosh, kids, look, I I just saw that the governor said blah 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 about, you know, you're going to have to about repeat. repeating grade, yeah." And it, but I was laughing by the end of it and my Aww. kids were like, "Whatever, mom." And my middle son was like, "Are you serious?" like just in case. And I Mm -hmm. said, no, I'm not serious. Well, it's funny because we did the same thing to our kids, but being homeschooled, like they don't really care. Like, no, they're the kind of student, like that you ask what grade they are and they kind of have to pause and think, you know, like what grade am I? Right. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So it wasn't quite as fun here. (laughs) Yeah. Do you want to hear the joke that I actually have been able to successfully pull off? I'm so proud of this. So I was seven ish months pregnant with Uh my, I think it was my first and went to a Christmas party with my husband and was meeting some new people. And I had this maternity shirt thing with some maternity pants, like black pants, red Uh shirt. I looked like a Christmas ornament. It was a big, I was big old red ball, (laughs) big old red ball. So one of his, uh, one of his coworkers that I had never met came up to me. He said, hi, so-and-so, this is my wife. And he reached out to shake my hand and said, oh, so when's the baby due? And I looked at him totally deadpan. I was like, I'm not pregnant. And it, uh, I pulled it off. I yeah. pulled it off. The look on his face. Oh, it was priceless. And then I started laughing and he was like, oh, you scared me. That I, would be horrible. I can't believe you managed that. That's actually, that takes a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of guts. <laughs> me neither. I can't. But my mom, like I felt bad this April Fool's Day because I felt like I did her wrong because I did not play oh, a no. single prank. Did not play a was single that her prank. Thing? She, <laughs> Oh my goodness. I, the one that I remember the most, she had kind of like a sadistic sense of humor. Like she loved to see people squirm. And Uh so I was a kid. I don't even remember how old I was, maybe like 10 or 11. I don't know. So I was downstairs in our, we had a finished basement and that's where the TV was. So I was watching TV. Maybe it was after school. I don't know. It was just me and her in the house. I know that. And I, I don't know. I, I, maybe I heard a thump. I don't know if I did or not, but I, I just kind of ignored it. So all of a sudden she comes down the stairs, like kind of angry. And she's like, well, I sure hope nothing ever happens to me, um, in real life, you know, for real. And I said, well, what are you talking about? And she said, I have just spent the last 10 minutes stomping really hard on the floor, lying down, waiting for you to come and find me. And you never came. <laughs> So this is her sense of humor. Uh, it really oh, wasn't that funny. funny. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, but I, she used to just like to play silly jokes on people and I, yeah. I wish I could remember more specifics, but I always tell my kids about that and about just how so, she liked to play pranks. Yeah. Well, I got, um, I tried to get a coworker and it totally backfired. So I, it was my first year of college and I was working, um, I was home for the summer working at the hospital lab and there was one other team that I was working with. And then everybody else, they were like, you know, people are our parents age. It was like this whole gaggle of moms. So it was almost like my coworker and I had like six surrogate mothers and it was like, it was a good work environment and it was fun. And there was one lady, it was both of our last days because we were both going off to college or back to college. And one of the ladies had like, we were really close to her and her, we knew that she was going to sneak out and leave so she wouldn't have to say goodbye to us because she was going to be too sad to say goodbye to us. And so what we did was we knew where she kept her purse during the workday. And so we moved her truck so that when she went to try to sneak out, she wouldn't be able to. And um, so then we decided that we were going to be really funny. And we were like, let's move her truck 
not just so she can't find it, but let's also park it in a doctor's only parking spot. Mm. Cause won't that be funny? Oh okay. no. So she does what we knew she was going to do. She sneaks out and doesn't say goodbye. And we just wait because we know she's going to have to come back. We know that as soon as she doesn't see her car there, that she's going to know that we did it and she's going to come back. We're like, okay, I'm going to give you a proper goodbye. Now you tell me where my car is. So we did. She came back. Ha ha, guys. Okay, where's the car? So we tell her where the car is. We say goodbye. She comes I back see a where few this minutes is later. Going. Oh she, no, guys, the car is not there. And so we go with her, thinking maybe we just gave her the wrong directions or something. Mm. We go with her. The car is not there. And so then she gets she gets on the phone with hospital security. It turns out they had it. She she comes in. She's like, guys, they towed my car. It's going to be two hundred and fifty dollars to me to get it out. And she and her husband were like in the middle of like breaking up. Oh, and she's like, no. and my husband's not helping out. He basically said, don't come home until you have this car. And so my coworker and I, we're like 17 or 18. We're like, okay, how much money do you have in the big, I don't know how much, like we're trying to figure out what are we going to do to get our poor coworker her car back? And then she started cracking up. Like the whole thing about it being towed was a joke. <laughs> so she got us back. She knew that we had moved the car. She knew we had put it in the doctor's only spot. So she went and hid it somewhere else. It was pretty funny. That is ingenious. I love it. I love both of those. That is, oh, what a great story. Because I did not see the twist coming. Yeah, yeah. No, That's we were awesome. we were pretty. Um, yeah, it was not fun. It was like, oh no, we thought we were being like, haha, aren't we fun? And it was like, oh no, we made a really dumb mistake. <laughs> oh no. Well, yeah. That that is the kind of prank I can only dream of coming up with. <laughs> both, both of them, the car uh -huh, uh -huh. and then right, right. Getting, yeah, getting you back. That's pretty cool. One day you and your, your family and my family can do like a prank war against each other. We'll do something. a prank off. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons I love the office so much because Jim oh, really? is always playing pranks on Dwight. Although we've watched the series over and over again and I've mm -hmm. come to realize Jim's kind of a bully. Like he's, he's, it's kind of in good fun, but at the same time, like he can be kind of a bully. So yeah, for those oh, okay. of you that watch the office, I don't know. I, Oh, one last thing. We probably should sign off soon. Cause I got to run and uh -huh. I'm sure you've got stuff to do, but I, my husband and I, we started watching psych after you recommended it. <gasps> you did. Yeah. It's really oh, cute. I'm so happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Yep. Okay. So that, that makes me neat. really, really happy. Yeah. That's like the best news I've gotten today. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's cute. I love, I didn't realize the premise of it and I really like it. Okay. It's kind of a neat, neat premise of. Okay. Yeah. So everybody can stay tuned for our spinoff podcast, the is, praying through psych. No, uh, the, we can just discuss it or, well, we did our episode on getting, gleaning prayer lessons through yes. movies. Maybe we yes. could glean prayer lessons through psych episodes. You know what I would totally do if I like had the energy and unlimited time <laughs> on my hands and like wasn't already like writing a bunch is I would totally make like psych themed devotions for families to go through, you oh, know, so that's cool. watch the episode together, you know, like, you know, it could have the little parental advisory because, you know, like it's, it's pretty decent ish, but like, you know, some families would want to skip certain episodes for you know various reasons so there would be right. like the parental advisory and then there'd be like discussion questions to have with your family like I'm never going to do it but it's always been in the back of my head like that would be so fun that would be neat okay so our prayer request today is for the cast members of psych in the office is that what we're praying for today sure why not <laughs> why not close medical oh, workers close. Okay. Okay. Medical oh you know workers. they're on the same level <laughs> and other essential employees Yes. Well, hey, you know what? Um, that actually reminded me. I just I, I hadn't done much with it lately, for lots of boring reasons. But one of them just because um, I didn't have the the same mic setup that I used to have. But so I hadn't been doing the Mindful Christian Prayers podcast in quite a while. But I did just do a new episode on like praying for healthcare workers that I thought would be kind of appropriate for. Oh, that's great. Pandemics. That yeah. is awesome. So yeah, and you can find that anywhere you find podcasts. Just Google, yep, yep. not the Google, but for mindful Christian prayers. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that podcast. Yeah. So you want to dive into the devotional for today? Sure. So we're on day five and we're going to pray for medical workers and other essential employees. 
And our Bible verse is Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Um, so this is kind of focused on medical workers because they're kind, they're definitely on the front lines, but as we've kind of realized, there are so many other essential workers that are making the world go round right now. And they are absolutely in need of our prayers. Um, I had a cousin of mine was, um, is she, uh, her, her, she, her husband has a family ranch slash farm mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. was talking about ranchers need prayers, farmers, they're doing yeah. lots of work now and people that are going to get, you know, trying to get food on the table, they're truckers, um, grocery right. store clerks, researchers, utility mm -hmm. workers, bankers, everybody working nonstop to keep life going and yeah. don't have the option necessarily of staying home. And mm -hmm. I know Mm -hmm. The precautions that I take at this time to go out just to the grocery store or just to, um, you know, take something over to the, the doctor for my neighbor, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it makes me realize, you know, there are people that, that go out into that every single day and right. they, you know, they're, they're putting themselves on the line. So we just need to definitely pray for them. Yeah, for sure. Let's throw in, you know, all the emergency personnel too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Firefighters, EMTs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So many. So yeah. So let's pray. Lord, we praise you for being the source of strength for those that are tired and weary and for being the strong tower of refuge for all of those who trust in you. We thank you for all the medical professionals, first responders, essential employees who continue to do the hard work, sometimes risking their own health and safety so that our everyday lives can continue to function without interruption of basic services like health, food, and utilities. We confess that we take these services for granted. Sometimes we just assume that they will continue, sometimes not realizing the names and faces behind those services. We acknowledge them today, Lord. Bring those names to our minds now. Let us see their faces and let us empathize with their struggle and their sacrifice. Help us to know how to pray for them and to intercede for their deepest needs, not just today, but every day. We lift up our medical professionals to you today. You know them each by name. You know the number of hairs on their heads. Meet them today with your power, your strength, and with energy to do the tasks that are set before them. Give them the drive to get up each morning, even when they'd rather stay home. Calm their anxieties and any fears for their families and patients. Give them wisdom to know how to protect themselves and provide medical supplies in abundance where there's a shortage. Cut the red tape, keeping them from receiving any supplies they need or being able to treat their patients properly and fully. We pray specifically for ventilators in those places where they're in shortage, for protective medical gear for those that need it. We ask that any barrier in getting these things where they need to be would be removed in Jesus' name. Gloves, masks, gowns, hand sanitizer, even at this moment, God, that you would open doors for all of these products to be found, donated, or manufactured, and gotten to the many people who need them now and likely will be needing them even more in weeks to come. Give doctors and nurses supernatural wisdom in diagnosing and treating the patients in their care. Give surgeons steady hands and laser focus, even as they're feeling uncertain about so many things in life right now. We pray that you'll sustain their mental health as well. Help them to know when the burdens of their job are taking a toll and when to seek help. Heighten awareness for friends and family, allowing them to see when extra support, help, or counsel are needed. We lift up other essential employees to you, Lord. We ask the same physical, emotional, and spiritual encouragement and protection for these people and their families as we do for medical professionals. Surround them with encouragers and people who will pray for them by name. We lift up researchers and developers of medical treatments or diagnostic testing. Give them wisdom, focus, and breakthrough to quickly and effectively deliver practical resources to identify and treat COVID-19. We ask that you would give them favor with authorities responsible for approving those tests and treatments and wisdom that only you can give to those making decisions about what goes out to the public to allow only those resources that are safest and most effective to reach the public. For all of these men and women serving their communities, serving the world, we ask that you would raise up the church to surround them with prayer, support, and practical help at every turn that you would equip Christians in these positions to be salt and light in their workplace, reflecting the hope and love of Jesus to every person in their care and in their sphere of influence. In Jesus' powerful name, amen.
That was a long Amen. one. That was a long one, but that no, I just love how there. thorough these are. Yeah, no, I I love that we can just kind of take these issues that are on everybody's hearts and kind of put them into, um, you know, put them into words, put these needs into human language. So I, yeah, I love that we're going through these. Well, one of the so the praise point is that God is our strength, and there's some scriptures listed. Um, and then be the light. The be the light challenge is adopt a worker and just ask God to bring to mind one medical professional or an essential employee, and first of all, pray for them and their family daily, and then just figure a way that you can encourage them either one time or regularly. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I heard a really cool thing where um someone just basically called in lunch for uh, for a, a ward of a hospital for the nurses and doctors mm -hmm, working there. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, basically, I don't know if it was pizza or subs or what it was. But yeah, just, but I love that too because it's helping the restaurants. You know what I mean? Like the restaurants are really suffering right now too. So that's, that's a fabulous kind of, you know, double positivity story yeah. for people who, you know, who have the means who want to do something like that. I think even just, you know, those people knowing that other people are thinking about them, I think is so important. Like I, I love seeing the pictures of people in big cities, you know, um, applauding the healthcare workers, you know, in their big sky rise apartments and they're on their balconies cheering. And I just, I love that they're getting that recognition. I love that grocery store workers are the heroes in this whole narrative, you know, cause yeah. how many times have people been short with them or even made jokes? Do you know what I mean? It's like, you better go to college because you don't want to work at McDonald's. You know, you don't want to stock Walmart shelves. Right. <laughs> and now like people who are like the heroes helping us not starve during this crisis. It's, yeah. it's really, I think it's a neat, um, neat that we're getting to recognize those people for what they do. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. And yeah. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. And for those of you listening, stay safe and healthy. And we'll probably be back again by Monday or pretty soon thereafter, Lord willing. And yeah, have a great day.